Venus is going to be making a move, right? But before we get there, let's go back to the quincunx that I spoke of. You coming up here? Hmm? You coming up? You know, we got work to do. Are you coming up? Are you just going to meow at me? Hmm? All right. Well, you're welcome to join. We got to see if we're working here. I think the camera is rolling and we're all... All right, we are doing a video for October. Wait, is it really October? Holy sh! This begins the season, Libra season. Actually, the last week of September began Libra season. I think it was September 23rd. So really, truly, like the last seven days of September began autumn on this side of the, in the Northern Hemisphere. Anyway, before I make myself confused and start talking about stuff that I don't know enough about, the sun is in Libra. But we're going to show the chart. We're going to talk about the energy for the week. And hopefully we get this all working really well so that there you go. Bam. Oh, we got Zoe here. I forgot to mention that. Zoe's here. She's whining at me. She's She'll tap me or smack me or whatever. She just So I just want you to know I'm not talking to myself. Um, but hey, is talking to yourself a bad thing? <laughs> Some would say only if you answer back. Or only if you hear, hear an answer. Anyway, that's another conversation for another time. We, I'm kind of going to begin on Mercury, though. All right, so let's go to Mercury. Uh, there's Mercury right there. I know I'm kind of jumping right into it, and I am. I'm excited, in a way, because Mercury, here we are, October 2nd, the week of, and Mercury, oh, do you see the kitty cat? <laughs> Felt something on my shoulder. I don't think it was spirit. Is that spirit tapping on my back? Or is that Zoe? Oh, spirit is all gray. You're a blue Russian. Look at that. Here, do you want to come on up? You see Mercury at 26 in Virgo. Mercury has cleared that shadow zone stuff that we were waiting on. Now, there's a point of caution here. And it's not long term. I just want you to be aware of it. For the weekend prior to this, Neptune. The planet Mercury was going to be opposing Neptune. So when Mercury and Neptune are not in a tight opposition, what happens? So that would have been like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Remember Mercury moves pretty darn fast. Okay. It would have been the opposition between Neptune and Mercury. And so remember Mercury is the news. Mercury is information. Mercury is learning and teaching. It's school. It's trade, it's business, it's the markets, it's the markets, it's the merchants, right? So if if Mercury is the opposite of Neptune energy, what do we know about Neptune? Well, Neptune at that time, well, and Neptune all the time is really strong because Neptune can dissolve things. And if it's not dissolving as in like, oh my God, one minute it's here and the next minute it's completely gone, it can certainly blur the lines of the information. So if you get a piece of paper, you get some information, you get some news, or somebody's telling you something, Mercury, coworkers, people that I talk to on the regular, classmates, siblings, that's all Mercury stuff. Gemini, all Mercury stuff, right? Mercury rules Gemini. Mercury also rules Virgo. So coworkers, now you get it. So the thing is, Mercury opposing Neptune. What does Neptune do? Well, Neptune has the ability to, it's, it's the murky waters. Okay. So this is where we talk about it being, oh my God, there's a cat paw in between my arm, in my armpit. <laughs> come on. If you want to come on, do you see how she does this? It's like a forever day thing. It's not fast. She will sit here and just wait for my hands to come to her, but she wants to stay where she is. And it's like, dude, my hands are here. I'm working. <laughs> she just, so Neptune is the murky water. So it can, when you get information, it all of a sudden it blurs it, or it's like there's confusion, right? There can also be deception. There can be 
um, it, it, remember it's dreams and sleep and fantasy, Neptune energy. So someone could be purposely being deceptive. Mercury opposing Neptune would be like propaganda, which is purposely being deceptive. Absolutely. To manipulate your belief system. Remember, this is just short term. This happens all the time, folks. This isn't like a big, oh my God, look what's going on. Pisces, Pisces ruler is Neptune and Jupiter, ancient ruler. So beliefs, a big deal, but especially a big deal for the U S because in the United States chart in their third house of thinking, they have Pisces energy. So it is no wonder that the United States is literally going through a belief crisis. It sort of is it's challenge. It's, it's like, what are my beliefs? Do I still believe in what I used to believe in? And so uh, education is a big deal. And what's at the opposite sign of Neptune, of Pisces, is Mercury, is education. Education, getting your facts right, understanding the difference between fact or crap, right? And so that's, that's a thing for that weekend. So that might be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, it's over with. Look, it's October second and Mercury's at 2622. Okay. So now as usual in a seven day time, we, we take these planets and we're like, where are they going to be in seven days? And so seven days takes us to October 9th. So we'll just draw that in here. October 9th, we're going to ride this out and we're going to take a peek and Mercury will then be at, uh, like right where Pallas Athena is here at eight degrees, eight, nine degrees, Mercury is going to be sitting here. So that means Mercury changes signs. That means Mercury is going to go from Virgo energy to partnership energy. That's a big, big deal. We have a lot of things happening. The end of the month, the government shut down in the U S which not good, right? Debate, which is here's my plan. Here's my thought. Here's what I think we want to do. And then the opposing side says, well, Hey, we don't agree with that. Here's our plan. Here's our thought. And then each side has to find a way to compromise so that each gets some of the things that they want. Is Mercury going into Libra going to help? Is it going to be a benefit? Well, I say absolutely. Yes. Because Mercury entering the sign of Libra will be a day when we have more compromise on the table, where we are more willing to listen to what the other side says, we are more willing, you know, it's like the fight has kind of left. It's more about harmony. How can we establish some harmony here? How can we make this work? And so we're talking just a couple of days after this, we're talking October 4th, October 5th, Mercury has entered the sign of Libra. So that means we've got Mercury and the sun and Mars all in Libra energy, which says, let's make a deal. So if there is a government shutdown, if that happens, um, go to Bo of the fifth column, his channel, if you want to know exactly what the, what the, I mean, there's other channels you can go to or other places you can find, but he does a really good job of having legitimate sources for his information. He's not about drama. He's not about the show and the shock and all shit. He just is very down to earth and straightforward. So I prefer listening to him when it comes to what the hell's going on in the world, especially if you're dependent on a government check. So my point here is that if that happens, when Mercury goes into Libra, there's strong support for let's work things out. So that's good news. Now, what's interesting is Libra and energy is cardinal. And so I'm going to kind of highlight the Libra and energy because we have the node there, the south node, and we know this, right? We know the nodes there because I've been talking about it since forever. And what makes all of this kind of difficult is that all the cardinal signs, right, especially Cancer and Capricorn, get a square because that's just the way it works all cardinal, when you have those matching energies, they square each other. And so that can bring the stress and the tension for, for the public, for families, for homes, for housing, because cancer energy is all of that. 
It's feminine energy, it's feelings, it's emotions, it's public sentiment. And then Capricorn energy is business and government. This is, well, these are our elected officials, people, right? But it's not so much them specifically, it's the rules, it's the structure of the government. That's what the Capricorn energy represents. But remember, let's not forget Pluto is retrograding at 27 degrees. And that's key because the United States has a 27 degree Pluto. And we're not going to spend our time talking about that here. People on this channel don't seem to want to hear about that. So we ju will just move on. But it's just good to mention it. All right. So that's that's a that's a, a strong T square. So it requires, you know, it doesn't mean it's going to be simple. Let me highlight that T square again in black. You see that T square. Uh, it can be tricky. It requires diplomacy and a lot of people saying, we got to make this stuff work. It's got, it's, it's a strong energy for that. And so interestingly enough, Mars is going to get to 29 degrees in our chart. Because here we have Mars. Let me go get Mars. Mars is at 23. But what's going to happen? What's going to happen with this Mars is that when we get to October, October 9th was this video. So in seven days time, we're going to have Mars. And I just want to double check it. Yeah, at 28, 29. So it's at a critical degree here. Let's just be real. Mars will be right here at this critical degree, 28, 29, which is 29 degrees in Libra. And that will be October 9th. So now for people who have cardinal energy in their chart, and that is Cancer and Capricorn. And I'm pointing those out because they create T-square energy. The other cardinal sign, of course, is Aries, and that's the opposition. I know this might be a little daunting. You, you, you know, knowing the basics will help you a lot. It'll get you far in this. And so the cardinal energies, Libra, Aries, Cancer, and Capricorn. In black, I have drawn out the T-square. All right. I'm going to draw the opposition in red. Aries is at the opposite. Remember the me and the we stuff I'm always talking about? Me versus we. Yeah. I'm always talking about that. That's the red. That's the opposition in red. Okay. Now, why do I need to know that? Well, the opposition is going to create like a push pull. So it's kind of like a teeter totter thing or a tug of war, right? It's like one minute we're over here, the next minute we're over here. So there can be a little bit of that going on, especially if you have things in Aries. But the cool thing about Mars at this time is that Mars goes up in numbers, it gets to 25. Then, then at that 25, I talked about this in the last video, it experiences that quincunx to Neptune, right? Which means Neptune takes the fight out of Mars even more, but it also, it also may take Mars's ability to compromise down a notch. So it's almost like, can this, this can go almost either way because Neptune is well, it's politics. It's like, I'm going to say things and it's all for a show. Remember Neptune? So Neptune is there and that's that quincunx, right? And, and I know I talked to you guys about the, the double quincunx and there being that, 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 that yod energy. And Mars isn't especially fast, right? So we have a few days where we get to experience that yod stuff because Mars at 25 degrees, what, what's over in the quincunx going on the other side, which is 150 degrees, that takes us to Taurus energy. And we have Elgo at 26. And on this day at this particular time, the moon is here. Don't know how I do that, but I do. Whenever I pull up my charts, it seems like there's things that move really fast that seem to be in really significant locations. That's just, uh, yeah, that's just, you know, just, just like a lot of that 12th house stuff, I think. Shit just happens. You don't even know how it happened or how you know the shit. It just does. And, and so the moon does represent the public again, but it's values. It is money. It's desire energy. It's love. It's self-worth. It's the earth because it's Taurus. And yes, Venus is over here as well because Venus rules Taurus. So we always got to keep considering all those same keywords because we know Venus is over here because Venus rules Libra, even though 
even though I have a Venus drawn out over here at the top of the chart, we're going to get to that. Venus is going to be making a move, right? But before we get there, let's go back to the quincunx that I spoke of. Now, Mars being here is going to throw a quincunx this way to Algo and the moon. And I'm going to draw this line again so you guys can see the quincunx, which means we have a yod because that's Algo and Neptune. Now, the yacht between, the between, um, you know, this, this, I'll say it like this. There's a sextile here between Elgo and Neptune, and they would have existed before the quincunx because you have to have the two 150 degree aspects, right? The moon's nodes at one point, when the moon's nodes, when the north and the south node were at 26, 27, right? Or especially when they got to 26 and Neptune was at 26, that was, that was creating that was creating that sextile that we see. But then Mars joined in because the moon's nodes moved. They went lower in numbers. And you see here, south nodes at 24, right? So it's pulling away. But now Mars, right? Mars, when we get to the the, the astrology of, of the butt end of the previous week, Mars in a quincunx with Neptune and that quincunx creating a yod. Now, one of the things I do want to say about the yod, it, it is known to be a point of creation. You can create with yod energy. That's the big picture with the yod energy. So now some people are like, oh, it's all spiritual. It's this and that. It's about soul energy. Either way, whatever, whatever, right? Whatever that is, it's going to still come down to you being a creator and so you choosing and deciding what you're going to create, how are you going to create and what you're going to use that energy with to create the Yad energy. Okay. Now let's move away from the Yad. We're getting to Mars at the end of the week in significant one-on-one -on -one relationships. It's not just about business and government, but this can be your relationships in your life. So Mars, yes, Mars at that 26, here's the thing. My, Mars is now squaring Pluto. That's the other thing about the Mars, right? I kind of wanted to save it for this video because Mars is squaring Pluto. And so that can be more, more, um, I, I kind of want to say more fight in a way because Pluto can literally give Mars some power back that Mars was losing. I know this is complicated because I just said, but Neptune's going to take away Mars's power, right? I did. And that's true. But we have to look at all of it, which is, which is Pluto throwing a square to Mars. And what happens when you have Mars and Pluto squaring? Well, there, there is, there is like an energy transfer where Pluto sends its power across and then Mars sends it back to Pluto. But remember, Mars is weak to begin with in Libra. You follow? So I really don't truly know what to say other than I know on this, at this time, you've got Pluto going really slow here. Pluto's going very slow. I have a video already about this. It's about Pluto going direct at 27 in, in Capricorn, right? And this Pluto energy is about power and people and government, but people also in big business. But either way, it comes down to power. Who will have power over who? And we're seeing this all over the world. And we're seeing it in places, especially like the United States, where you know, this country's formation was to get out from under the foot of those who were our betters. You follow? Those who had power of us, those who had more money than us, right? That was the whole idea, to get away from those other governments. And um, here we are. <laughs> here we are. And and we're, we're seeing that we have those who are in power and who were voted in power, and they were supposed to be representing us, but in the reality, they're ruling over us. And so we're, we are waking up to that. We're waking up to that. We're going to go find Venus.
Here she is. Here's Venus on this day at 25 in Leo. And where is she going to be when we get to the end of the week? Venus at the end of the week, which is the, the 9th of October, Venus has now entered Virgo at zero degrees. Remember, Venus is about harmony. She wants to create peace. She wants goodness. Venus in Virgo is smart. Venus is about my desires. It's about money. It's my money in the bank, right? That's Venus. She wants the good things, the good stuff, the quality earth energy. When she gets into earthy Virgo, there's some magic that's happening here because we have Mercury now, the communicator, the one who can talk in Libra with Pallas Athena and, and Venus has arrived in Virgo. So now Venus can say, guess what? I see the details. I see what's needed. And she can share that information with Mercury. And she could say, this is what's needed. I know you were already here, but now I had a chance to check it out. Now I'm here and I'm ready to tell you what needs to be done. And it will be Mercury's job to bring that information forward and to communicate it. So in my mind, the quincunx is Mars to Neptune which means it can take away the fight and the disagreeing. And Mercury can be stronger because she's in air and it's in Libra, which says, I am the ultimate diplomat. I've also got the sun here, which by the way, the sun is now at the beginning of this chart at nine degrees of Libra. So it's diplomacy right there, conjunct Pallas Athena. But then the sun comes along as we move out into the week. Remember one degree a day. So it is angling and squaring. Remember everything on Libra is angling and squaring Capricorn energy and cancer energy. So it's uncomfortable, right? There is stress. There is tension. There's we, something has to change. And it's such a difficulty that there has to be compromise for forward movement. You follow? And that's the whole point. So the sun set one degree a day. That means if we add seven degrees to this nine degrees, nine and seven is 16. That puts the sun there. Yeah, there's, that puts the sun there, 16 degrees. So at 16 degrees, what happens then? The sun is now squaring Vega in Capricorn. It's squaring the Cancer energy even, right? Whatever we got in Cancer at 15 degrees, Again, it's some more agitation and irritation. It is the home. It is families. It is the public because that's cancer energy. Okay. It's emotions even, but it's also business and government. There's a lot that has to be worked out here, but the good news is that whenever we have all this energy in Libra, there's the ability to talk. There's the ability to understand that, that the only way forward is to meet in the middle. We can't be to the left and we can't be to the right. We can't be, the extreme isn't going to work. That is not how we're going to get forward. We have to find a way to meet in the middle. We still have Juno in fire energy. Juno is with black moon Lilith and Juno is at 26 degrees. And if you don't know who Juno is, that's the symbol for Juno. Well, Juno is slower than Venus. So Juno is sitting here at 26 by October 9th, Juno is sitting here. Here's the kicker though. Black Moon Lilith is sitting with Juno. Black Moon Lilith is right here at 25 degrees. So there is still some fight left. You follow? Because the fire trines the fire and it, it's the fire power. It gives it that ability to have a little bit of just a little bit of that fight in there. But it is optimistic. It is fun because it's Leo energy. It is people who happen to be in the limelight and the spotlight because the sun rules Leo energy. It can be comedians. It can be the politicians, unfortunately. You know, it can be people still having a little bit of fun and kind of treating serious things like a game. But I have a feeling there's going to be, you know, some some seriousness that, that they're going to be met with because Uranus is still sitting here at 22. And Uranus is, remember, the disruptor. 
And so Uranusat 22 had just got done giving, giving these two, giving Juno and Black Moon Lilith a square, a shakeup, a disruption. Uranus comes along and, and takes the cards off the table and says, this isn't a damn game. So we will talk about that and, and the following video, the October 9th video, we'll go a little bit deeper to see how the rest of this is going to play out for us. And do we have a compromise? So I appreciate you watching. Take care. Bye-bye.